Hey Ratbags, it's Jade. Today I'm going to take you through the secret ending, kind of, of Sons of the Forest. It's something you have to do if you want to get all the NPCs off alive and basically take Virginia with you. There is a chance that you might not have seen this because you might not have befriended Virginia properly if you kind of rush through the game. So I'm showing you the trailer now. I'm also going to show you how to get Virginia to be your friend much sooner and get the achievement for it, which is the actual trigger for this particular ending. Also, is there going to be a final boss fight? That's speculation at the moment. Some people are saying you can see stuff in the game files. So we'll talk about that. It's not the full ending, of course. It is still an early access game, but there will be some sort of final boss fight by the looks of things. Do leave a like if you find it useful. Go and check out my other channel, JPG 100 Days, where I'm live streaming Sons of the Forest every single day. And let's go. Okay, well, actually, I'm going to stick here. We're not changing the scene. Obviously, you've seen this by now. You've seen that you take Kelvin with you. But the difference is that Virginia also makes it into the cube. Now, this does change some theories that I had before. I thought the cube cured people because we see Timmy basically getting all of these different multiple Timmys out of him. And then he's holding his hand as if it's all been fixed. But that's not the case for Virginia. She doesn't get cured. She's still got her three legs and three arms. The backstory of Virginia is that she is, of course, the daughter of Edward Pufton and his wife Babs, and obviously been a mutant for a while. She's had her own special area in the bunker and one of the final ones where you explore, and yeah, that's the deal. Still don't know what's going on with that dude, still haven't found any lore or real story beats about who they exactly are, but yeah. And that's Timmy there, you see, holding his hand. That's what made me really feel like, yeah, he must have been cured. But she has a little bit of a moment and she looks like she's in pain or she's going about to die. But don't worry, Virginia's going to be coming home with you. So just to show you the achievement popping that you also get for having both of the NPCs in the cube at last minute, keep your friends close. You're not going to be able to get that one though until you get Shivery Isn't Dead achievement. So we'll come back to that in a second as well though, just to see the ending, to show the differences. Again, it's not like a super amazing different ending, it's just to show you that you could have missed this and technically it is a secret one. So yeah, if you know any story or lore beats about exactly where Timmy's dad and Timmy disappeared to when we came across the sluggy in one of the cutscenes earlier, let me know if there's any other bits of lore that expand upon stuff. I found stuff to do with more artifacts like the small little sort of pyramid or whatever it is that we see and obviously other bits, but it really doesn't explain who the people are that we're kind of chasing around or interrupt and save, I guess, Timmy and thingy by shooting him and killing the sluggies. It's a bit of a weird one, but there you go. There's Virginia. She's nestled on your shoulder and that's it. That's the only difference so far. Good luck bringing Virginia home to your mums and pups. So as I said, you need the Chivalry Isn't Dead achievement and you get that from befriending Virginia at her maximum. She's got basically sentiment and it's got to be at the maximum before you can actually complete the game. Now mine just popped up while I was doing some speeding through some days to test some features with winter. But here's how you can actually get it quicker or to make sure you've got it before you finish the game. So first things first, make sure you have a tent up. Even if you've built a nice log cabin with beds, she actually sticks around tents more. Hence why you find her sometimes randomly across the map, it will be close to where you maybe had a tent save point. Make sure she's got a bench next to a fire. And these are all the same actual processes that you'll do to get her in the first place. Make sure you've got a fire with a bench on it. Make sure you've got some crop plots so that she can go and pick her own berries. She can eat merrily on other stuff. Obviously, you don't need to feed them. But if you've got crop plots, she'll come and actually take stuff from them. She does get cold. We saw her shivering in the trailer. So make sure you've got plenty of fires around as well. Light one if she's next to it. When she gets down, don't just leave her to get back up. Try and revive her. That's also another factor in getting her to be your friend even more. And whenever possible, don't have a weapon equipped around her and make sure that when she beckons you a few times, you actually go and follow her. Especially if she starts dancing, don't ignore it. Let her shake her booty against whatever tree trunk it is. You'll know you're making progress when she starts giving you more food. So this is usually just before she actually becomes your friend and you can give her stuff. But for the affinity, then she's going to keep giving you thumbs up. She's always going to follow you around much more in close proximity. And the quicker you give her her guns, the quicker she gets better with them as well. If you've done absolutely everything in the game and you just want to get to the ending, then maybe go ahead and skip a few days and nights and see if it pops like it did for me. But that's it. That's how you get her affinity up to get the achievement, Shivery Isn't Dead. And hopefully unlock the final ending. 
So when it comes to the secret boss files or boss fight, yeah, it does substantially leave lots of questions. That blobby thing and the woman in silver, I know she looks a bit androgynous, so you might have mistaken her for a man, but it is a woman, does indeed, or is indeed, the bad guy. She's literally labelled that in the game files. So it does feel a bit empty that we haven't actually had some sort of altercation with maybe a big enemy. I'm not too sure though. I think that's just because it's in the game files, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to make it as the final. We know we're going to get more story, or hopefully more lore about who that person in silver is, because I'm pretty sure there is nothing that actually explains it. Some speculation that it's Mia from an alternate universe, or possibly somehow survived the original. One thing I think maybe we can all agree on is it was probably a mistake to include that final cutscene. Most early access games wouldn't have done that until at least 1.0 to give players more of a reason to maybe play through or come back and revisit the game at 1.0. Games like these, it's not the most important thing. People just like surviving and challenging themselves against the monsters and stuff. But the forest was always a good kind of example of what you can do with environmental storytelling. Maybe not having the budget for a billion NPC voices and stuff or cutscenes, but there still was a substantial story in the original and they did have them cutscenes too. So a really, really odd decision to leave that in. I think it would have been better for the cube to maybe not have shown stuff, just faded to black and some maybe dialogue or some written something saying that, hey, you're going to see the true ending at 1.0. I don't think we'll fight that blobby thing. It did look like it was a bit of a mess. But there you go. That's my thoughts and opinions about the ending. Let me know what you think. Until next time, Ratbags, go and check out my live streams for 100 Days of Sons of the Forest. And I'll see you, Ratbags, later.